we're going to have Occupy the Hood and Occupy Chicago kind of give a perspective here locally. Um, the anti-eviction campaign is going to share a little bit about what they're doing and why and how they're using the movement. And after that, we're going to have people just talking to each other. People are going to come up here, talk to each other, and we're going to give you all cupcakes for staying. <laughs> so uh, Matt Ginsberg from anti-eviction campaign is going to share a little bit more, and he also represents staff. Uh, Southside is definitely going to be power. Can somebody make the lights? Mic check, mic check. Actual mic check. <laughs> I think that. All right, I'll do it. I have a loud voice. No, no, no. It works. It works. The mic works. Yeah. You can hear me. Okay, it's not loud. Okay. I'm gonna be real quick because I think we're about ready to get out of here. But I have a real quick thing. I don't think we can leave the call to bring the margins to the center of this struggle. It's just uh, a call. I think we need to talk concrete. So I'm gonna in three parts, which will each take 10 seconds. <laughs> in three parts, give you an invitation to bring the margins to the center in this struggle. One, tomorrow, one of the homes that's been reclaimed, uh, a home that Chase Bank thinks that it owns or thinks that it's about to own, where we've uh, moved in a family. Uh, the family has been fixing it up. Uh, we had a, it was part of the National Day of Taking Back Homes. They need support. They need people coming out. Uh, they will be doing it all day, 12 to 4 o'clock. Um, home fix up day to show that we don't have to wait for the banks, we don't have to demand anything of the banks, we can take back what should belong to ours because the land belongs to the people. So that's 8730 South Troop tomorrow, 12 to 4. Part one. Okay? Part two. Part of bringing the margins to the center means taking up the struggles that have been fought um, for long, long time by the most marginalized community and putting them at the center of the struggle and saying that these struggles are what represent the fact that this system has nothing for us. And so one of those struggles that's very near and dear to my heart is the struggle against the closure of half of our city's mental health clinics. Um, there's been some shows of solidarity by different groupings within Chicago, but it needs to be brought more to the center, not just part of a laundry list of the things that Mayor Manuel is doing wrong, but rather something that we see not just out of sympathy, but out of solidarity and strategy is something that's central to the future of a healthy and viable Chicago, right? We need to show that we're not going to allow them to take away services for the most marginalized because it affects all of us. So on Wednesday, we want you all to join us at City Hall. Uh, we're going to Christmas carol to the mayor. Um, alternative Christmas carol to the mayor <laughs> at 9 a.m. Uh, and this is a prelude to much more dramatic actions that will be coming in through the new year, but we need people to start getting involved now in order to build the swell of support to actually physically stop these closures from happening. So that's 9 a.m., second floor of City Hall. Bring your best singing voice and your best Christmas and holiday gear. Those are the flyers that they were passed out. The events on the flyers they were passed out with the picture of the Grinch. <laughs> and last one part three knock on doors okay we need people to not just come to events it's very important to come into dialogue etc but we need to bring people into the movements not only do we need to bring the margin to the center we need to bring those who traditionally sat comfortably in the center to the margin we need support building up the kind of, a, the kind of uh, base that it's going to take to really have a true threatening backlash against this system itself. Um, every Saturday, staff has been knocking on doors in different wards where we're targeting all the men who shamelessly and spinelessly voted uh, as a rubber stamp council for this budget um, and who we are trying to make hear loud and clear the message that we're not going to let them close down our clinics. So any Saturday you feel like coming down and knocking on some doors with us, we've been sending out between 10 and 40 people every weekend to knock on doors um, and bring people into this struggle, uh, particularly around some strategic areas that are strategic to the actions coming up. So 6146 South Kenwood, any Saturday, um, join us at 11 o'clock. We'll feed you and send you out into the field. Um, so that's it. And I just wanted to close by saying we need to look to the, to the leadership of the movements, in the, especially in the third world, that have paved the way for what it means to truly build transformative organizing processes. And those movements don't have one group of people that challenges the system and sells newspapers or whatever, and one group of people that talks about real issues in people's lives. That's, those, they bring those pieces together. It's not just either bring down capitalism and white supremacy and the other systems that oppress us, or let's save our clinic. They go marching hundreds of thousands in the streets, millions in the streets, shutting down highways, etc. And the demands are, end neoliberalism, end the free trade agreements. The step, president stepped down, and we need a new clinic, and we need a paved road, and we need etc., etc., etc. We need to do that here. So these are three invitations for you to be part of that process. Thank you.
Acupy Chicago. All right, uh, my, my name is Mark Banks. Uh, I've been with Acupy Chicago being down since uh, September 23rd. So I was instructed to talk a little bit about what got me out there and where we'd like to go from here. So I'll try to have you have it. Um, basically, like, uh, you know, a lot of us, hopefully all of us are aware that we're right smack in the epicenter of one of the most horrifying empires in history, right? And, uh, you know, these jagoffs have been trying to expand and get bigger and stronger lately. I mean, all, all along. But, uh, you know, the communists are gone, so now anti-terrorism is the way to expand or whatever. Um, something happened recently, though. You know, the, a situation being in the epicenter, right? Not being, not even being on a fringe where you can try to, like, decolonize and answer victory. But being in the center, it's like, how do you, you need a revolutionary struggle against an empire? How the fuck do you do that? So, like, you know, it's, it's not conducive to a lot of hope. It's more conducive to apathy and things like this. But then something happened not too long ago. You know, you had the Arab Spring going on. Muhammad Abu Aziz, the martyr, you know, immolated himself in public. And this triggered revolutions in Tunisia, Egypt, Bahrain, Syria, elsewhere. Um, and it kind of made me realize, like, you know what? This, uh, this, this revolution in communications technology and the Internet is to the contemporary struggle of the people against globalized tyranny as, for example, the endless Russian step was to Napoleon's armies. Like, this is a thing they simply can't deal with logistically. Like, it's too fast. It's too, it's, it's too powerful. And so it kind of made me realize there's something we actually can do about it. Like, we can push forward a revolutionary struggle in this context. Um, so I heard about Occupy Chicago starting, and I've been following uh, Occupy Wall Street um, as much as it was covered, which was not much. Um, and, but, you know, once I saw Occupy Chicago going on, I knew I had to go get down there and uh, do what I could to make this happen. So, you know, it was like seven of us, a couple knuckleheads sleeping in the rain the first night. And now it's this shit. So, like, you know, this shit is real. Um, so, you know, the, my, my reason is, is, is kind of general, or, I mean, or at least I'll, I'll describe it here generally as, like, uh, it, I, I recognize the historical moment that was graspable. Like, it was something we could actually tangibly identify and take hold of and seize and utilize. Um, to put power into the hands of the people rather than uh, this, this elite minority. Um, so that's what got us out. Where I'd like to go from here, uh, where, where the movement, I'd like to see the movement expand to, is to take it outside of those who are radical and, and, to, and to bring it to everyone, to the whole populace. So like, let's radicalize the unions, students, fucking faculty, let's ra radicalize them, you know? And uh, let's get everybody on board for the, for the big win so that we can, in a broader sense, have some kind of true revolutionary struggle that's going to change social and economic paradigms in a way that's beneficial to the, to the mass of humanity, to the bulk, the, the, the overwhelming majority. Um, but in, in a shorter term sense, what I'd like us to start thinking about and talking about is next year in G8 NATO and how we can turn that into a profound psychological victory for the people. Let's shut that shit down. Let's have, you know, look what they're doing in, uh, on, on the West Coast. They're shutting down the production service cycles, right? Well, let's do it here. It's going to be real fucking hard to have a, 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 a pleasant GA NATO conference about how to control the world when you can't get a fucking taxi to get there, right? Or when you can't. Yeah. When nobody, when nobody's willing to fly your fucking airplane to get here, right? Or when nobody's willing to sell you a sandwich because you're a piece of shit. Let's, 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 let's start making this bit better. Let's, 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 let's get the working class people on board, not just the radicals, not just the people who are fucking wild like myself. Let's get, let's get our people who got kids and families and have been doing all the normal shit for a long time. Let's get them radicalized. Let's tune them into the fact that this is their struggle. And then it's all of our struggle. And we're all fucking brothers and sisters here. So let's get on board for the big win. And then let's start with a big, big huge psychological victory next, next year, next spring, here in Chicago, when Chicago is going to be a center of visiting culture in this country. Because there's going to be 100,000 people coming here already. Let's have a fucking big ass strike going on at the same time. Let's shut it down. Let's make them cancel G8 NATO. Let's have that psychological victory. Because Occupy is an idea, right? Like, Occupy Chicago has been shut down pretty hard because they know they're coming to having GA NATO. They didn't give us a camp. We tried, they, 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 they prevented it, right? So let's get that victory. Let's say, you know what, you can't do this here. This is our land. This is our fucking city, not yours, you know? So I think that we should start by, by generating a, a psychological victory next year that will enhance the power of this idea of Occupy and make it more powerful so that it can be a thing that can never be extinguished and go on to the future to a true victory for the people. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we are not one hundred ways, but we are brothers and sisters, I agree. Um, wanted to quickly give panelists one more chance if they want to say something in closing. If not, we're going to thank them. And then folks are going to bring out cupcakes because it's Jay Adams Day. And after that, people can stay here and hang out and talk to each other. The whole was here is that you don't come and get like education banked in your brain and that you don't really reflect or think on things. We're hoping that the, the, the real...